Hello everyone, it's Commander Ship. I'm joined by Ollie and Daniel to talk about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And yes, we're coming to you a week or two after the movie has premiered. You know what's happening on the site, so deal with it. <clears throat> Be all right. And this gives us some opportunity to kind of have, hopefully most of you have seen it, and uh, this will be a spoiler chat. So this is your warning. Look at the graphics that will show up on the screen. Just if you, have the, if you haven't watched the movie, go away. Go away. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. 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 And honestly, why are you looking at a Dr. Shane's review if you haven't, you know, go go look for a spoiler-free review. Those exist. I, I'll write one. Just, just da, 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 da. All right. So uh, as we normally like to do, uh, just start with some uh, impressions. You know, kind of just go around the table and get some impressions of how you, you know, you know initial thoughts. So uh, since we got Ollie joining with us to, uh, tonight, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so my first impression, I'm going to do Tony Soprano. <laughs> oh, say, uh, you know, I was uh, doing it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, I will admit, uh, first and foremost, that I am a Sam Raimi fan. So I'm one of those, unfortunately. So I uh, had certain expectations going into the film that were met and exceeded in most cases. Uh, I was very happy with it. I thought that... Um, I thought that it felt like Sam Raimi presenting us a film at the in the first half that was a Marvel film, and then being like, "Well, here's my movie," and then in the second half it turned into a Sam Raimi movie, and I thought that was perfect because I was just like, "Man, this isn't really what I was expecting at first. and then I was like, "Okay, this is what I was ex this is what I'm here for. <laughs> here's the here's that good good." <laughs> Nice. So I uh, I greatly enjoyed the film, um, just from a just from its filmmaking perspective, like in in an, like completely separately from the MCU at large. Uh, I know that I'm probably one of the uh, one of the few. It seems to have some of the not as not as good reviews uh, so far in the in the MCU for a while, but I uh, I can only speak positively of it. I have some some gripes because I mean. No, I'm also a realist, and I can see that nothing is perfect. But I, I, I as a whole, I thought it was great. Oh, cool. Yeah, and to be fair, it's it was not. It's currently rated well, well and above like uh, Thor: The Dark World and uh, Eternals. So, you know, what not... isn't? <laughs> well, those are the only like turds <laughs> like yeah, the yeah. actual bad ones <laughs> so like Drew, black widow uh i think mm. boring and and slow is different than like actively bad <laughs> i was just having that conversation today i would Hulk. take that's okay i think it's boring as well not not so much i don't think it's a bad film but i think that it's a boring film mm. whereas maybe if maybe ang lee hulk is a bad film but it isn't a boring film. <laughs> how, how can you be? How can fight in a cloud be boring? <laughs> it's not boring at all. I would. I wouldn't say that. I do like that movie. Mm -hmm. Goodness. All right. Uh, how about you, Daniel? I didn't see it. <laughs> no, Doctor Strange. No, I'm kidding. I saw it. Uh, I was confused for, and terrified for a second. I was like, we're going to be dropping all these spoilers? <laughs> yeah, there's no spoilers if you've seen the trailer. That's my opinion. Okay. I actually avoided the trailers for it. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I went into it with very low expectations, like I do with all Marvel now, But and then I enjoyed by it. It's... I don't know. I thought Sam Raimi's did a good job. I... I think I agree with you that he definitely made some creepy stuff later. I thought it was the most violent Marvel movie. So I'm I'm very intrigued to see what kind of doors that are opening with that. I thought the raising people from the dead, I thought that some of the creepy things were like really well done. Um it was definitely like an elements of the horror movies and stuff like that where what was the X Men one? The first mutant or new mutants was supposed to be like the first horror movie made in that, and that movie just was flopped and was bad. I think that this one was the first one that actually had like some scary elements to it. So, I'm intrigued. I hope that they do it. I hope they carry that on. Um, 
I definitely also had complaints, and there were definitely things that was kind of forgettable. Um, I thought that like it was good. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, I'm very hold, like hold, hold that thought in your head. What are your thoughts, Kenny? <laughs> like, I'll my... throw it back to you because you have more thoughts than I do. <laughs> I have more. What do you mean I have more? Yeah. Uh, I'm in a kind of a I'm in a similar boat where it's we have talked about being marveled out. You and me talked about that offline. And um, so there were some refreshing things in this film. I also feel like uh, it kept some a lot of the same visual flair from the previous Doctor Strange and expanded on that quite a bit in ways I was very excited about. Um, so there's some, there we'll talk about some oddities visually that, and it might be just some rust from Sam Raimi. But there's some other things like he really, I'm like, Oh, okay. I like it, especially for like a superhero movie. Like some of them can be very bad in numbers, color palette wise, or just like the look of them. I appreciated yeah. that Rami continued the things that happened in previous Strange and was like, what else? What else? How further can we can we go with that? Um, and then there was a twist from the folks that have watched WandaVision that I appreciated, uh, but it causes some problems, which we'll get into. Uh, but just generally, I liked Wanda being a little more forefront in this movie as well. So. Those are some things that just stood out immediately where I'm like, okay, uh, there's there's some things that are irritating and we'll, <laughs> I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't let the movie off the hook for those, which we'll get to, but uh, generally it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. It's fine. It's not okay. It's fine. It's good. Does that, does that work? <laughs> I think Did everything you? that's good about it is probably spoilers. Like, like did you bring mm. me on here to be the Sam Raimi apologist? To, I know. To, to, to try to devil's advocate all of the things you guys said. I love, no, I love, I love I Sam think, Raimi. I'm going to I'm gonna get into that, too. Molly, I think I would agree with you. that I think that if this movie had been done by somebody other than Sam Raimi, it would have been absolutely crap. I 100% agree. And I actually feel like that's probably why he was brought in over them getting somebody else when Derrickson left because they were probably like, I think we need a deft hand <laughs> to be handling this one. I mean, this is the first movie where they put the director's name in the trailer for a Marvel movie. I'm pretty, I'm like 99% sure it's the first one. And if it isn't, then it was, they said the Russo brothers and Marvel made those guys anyway. Like, the, like the MCU made him. But Kenneth Branagh didn't need his name in the trailer. Like, I didn't even know Kenneth Branagh made him. I Which was gonna one? say Gunn and James maybe Gunn. Favreau early. Oh. Or am I confusing other Disney things he's done? So that I think might. John Favreau's name is on Mandalorian, probably. That's might be what I'm thinking about, but I don't know if he's yeah. But but also they put arguably, his name on uh, the Lion King as well, I think. So yeah. arguably in that case, so it's like I wouldn't count the him or the Russo brothers because the MCU made those guys into the names that they are now anyway. And so it feels like, whereas Sam Raimi was already a name, even though, ironically, it was from a Marvel property. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, they all had to... Oh, go ahead, Dan. Are they, is, is, like, Marvel just exploiting, like, the things that Raimi does? Whereas, like, it's, yes, we utilized... Is it a Sam Raimi film, or is it a Marvel film that they utilized Sam Raimi's name on and made him play in the Marvel same box? Like... Sam Raimi could go make a movie that's like super his own thing, which would be awesome. There's just like, I think it, you, the, this was the better movie because Sam Raimi was on it. I'm not like arguing that that is not like true. Um, I think that it just falls into the same traps of Marvel movies, whereas like the, um, I'm just being a jerk now. <laughs> no, no, no. So I, 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 can see I, 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 I've been, I've been thinking about this particular thing, and okay, let's just, let's just get into it. What? Who? There, there's a, there's. Let's rip off that bandage. Let's get, let's rip it off. I, I hate the way this movie was written. <laughs> so I, and I, I feel like it's Sam Raimi directing what he has in front of him. Like this is the script that's in front of him. So. And he does, and I'm not trying to say he does the best of what he's given, but that kind of, kind of. So like, you see the Sam Raimi isms throughout the film, 
and I love those touches and I love that feel of it. But just from a writing perspective of what they're, or the overall plot is a thing to me that is frustrating. Um, we could talk about, uh, if you've seen WandaVision, these are not the same two Wandas. I don't care what anybody, I don't care what anybody says. It's Marvel has really gotten sloppy and we'll, I know we're going to talk some phase four and a, and a, another, another episode, but there I've, I felt like with the exception of one or two characters, they generally like Loki feels like Loki from, from movie to movie. You can kind of pick some other folks like Tony Stark because it's so much RDJ is like Tony pretty much feels you might have, you might think they made him do some dumb stuff in a previous movie, but still feels like that was Robert Downey Jr. Whereas this is one of the first times I'm actually like, I don't. So did anything that happened here not matter or any of the characterization that you did over here? Or the growth, you know. I thought I thought this person had grown, you know. Uh, so that's where I don't. I don't think that's under Sam Raimi. I don't think that's Sam Raimi's fault. I think that's more of a game. This is how they chose to write this character, and this is how Elizabeth Olsen has to try to play her in this new movie. And y'all are doing the best you can, but this is what that. This is the direction they chose to go. So that's just like one example. Hot take. That's what you get when you have someone who wrote Rick and Morty writing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, I I don't yeah. disagree. I think that mo- the movies, I think Marvel's movies are just so planned out so far at, in out that all of a sudden they've just given they put parts out and say these twelve things are going to happen and give them to twelve different groups of people and they all go off and they all have their different tendrils and they have to keep them somewhat tertiary like connected but like this had very little connection to spider-man like the last spider-man that came out five months ago could have been any type of movie and this had absolutely no connections to it it felt weird having seen a movie a marvel movie back in november december and it having literally no connection to this marvel movie now Whereas those two movies, they literally could have been two different groups of people put behind different walls said, you just have to reference these two characters, but they don't have to connect at all. And that's a spoiler for it, but it's like, it carried nothing on. There was no, like, there was nothing built up from Spider-Man, even though Doctor Strange was in Spider-Man. I went into this thinking Spider-Man was going to have some, like, all the multiverse stuff that he did was going to be connected to it. None of that was connected to it. It was just, like, an offhand comment, but, like, that whole story, that everything that they had built up from that movie that had been built up from the movies before was not connected to this at all. And then I was like, oh, we're, oh we have a new character that just jumped in at the very beginning. And so, like, as soon as the very beginning started, I'm like, who is this person? And why do we care about this person? She's got a star on her the back of her jacket. She's the star of the movie. They showed it literally in the first shot of her. It's she's incredible. The star of, she's the star that's, of that, That's my point. It's like, you have no idea who it is. And so they're like, this is who you need to be following. And I'm like, who is this person? And the movie did nothing to make you care about the character. And so it was like, the, like it was looked cool. And like Sam Raimi's touch was a great in it. If it had not been Sam Raimi, it wouldn't have been as dark. I think it was like cool that they like raise people from the dead. I do think that Wanda was very different. And that's where I think that, like, you have people in ten different rooms that go off and write their own scripts, and then it's like, there's not... It feels connected, and, like, people can write how it's all connected, and it looks like it's connected, but it's just, like, it looks like it's so... It's starting to, like, feel those cracks. Yeah, because I will say, case in point... And this is, I think the scene that encapsulates that for me is the Illuminati scene. Is so Elizabeth Olsen, I think, does a great job in this film overall. I really, I do actually really, Elizabeth Olsen, I did, I did really love her. I did really love her in this. So when she's dispatching uh, Reed Richards and Black Bolt and just visually, I'm like, that, that's, that's amazing. That's that. Thank, thank you, Sam. But also, to your point about people kind of walk, riding in different rooms, this this scene has not had the impact I think y'all wanted it to have. Like, if I 
this, to your point about Spider-Man, let's rewind back to Spider-Man. When you're having those intros for the villains pop up, where you have finally seen Gar- Garfield or um, uh, sorry, McGuire show up, yeah, there's the fan service piece of that, but they actually, at least how it's written in the in the film, it's like it works pretty well. Like I feel like those scenes make a little more make a little more sense, and they how they come in, it's like cool, and now we can go and we're off the races. Here we go. Whereas this one, it's like it felt like the most stand around fan service thing I've ever seen, or at least in a long time, uh, by Marvel. And then Wanda dispatches them spectacularly, and then we move on, and I'm like. Honestly, you could have just picked anyone else. You could have just done some other alternates or things you've already seen instead of trying to intro new characters here that just weren't having a impact for me. So, like, it, it's I struggle because that scene worked in some ways with the Wanda and Sam and Raimi's touch over it, but like actual impact and arc to the story was was minimal. You could have thrown anyone else up there, um, and I don't know. Like, I mean, some people in my screening were cheering about it. Right, they really liked seeing everyone up there, and I'm like, okay, we got Jim, we got Jim from the office to finally play Reed Richards. I know that's the thing. I know the internet said that was costly going to happen. I know it's a joke. But, I got- like he's going to come back, and like they're going to redo the Fantastic Four, and he'll be in that one. So like that scene has is a very meaningless. It's just going to be retconned and just like brought back. But like. I thought the Patrick Stewart scene was, like, the creepiest thing it had been put on. Like, I thought that was really creepy. And it was maybe it was because of Patrick Stewart, but, like, I thought that was a really cool scene. Oh, in um, the dream? Or the, uh... Yeah, like, when he was in her head and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. And that's definitely the, like, Sam Raimi touch that was put on it. So, okay. Here's my, here's my thought about the Illuminati scene, the Sam Raimi apologist. Here we come. <laughs> I will say, I think that Sam Raimi was drawing on the horror, uh, the horror. Okay. Well, so I think if, if, if in my gut, I feel like the writer completely botched the scene because it's the exposition dump and it's done. So it's such an obvious exposition dump where, so you could take, uh, you could take uh, Winter Soldier, which has maybe the best exposition dump scene in movie history, where they, uh, where the computer is talking to to Captain America, <laughs> oh, and, and, Zola. and Zola is talking to Captain America, and he's just like crapping out exposition nonstop for like for like ten minutes, but we're still terrified of this scene. Uh, before before multiverse, I think Winter Soldier was the closest we had to a horror film in uh in the MCU, really. But I think that um, I think that that this scene in in Doctor Strange should have been like the death knell for the movie, where you just lose the audience. But I feel like there's something here that I think is overlooked, which is the fact that I think that this is the horror movie. This is the the horror movie roots of Sam Raimi pulling from the slasher movies, where I think these are the kids that are going to be dispatched by Jason. And I don't think we're supposed to care about them. <laughs> I really feel like they're here because they're all kind of dicks. Let's be honest. They're no, all that, presented that's, that's as dicks. <laughs> it's literally, except for Professor X. And I feel like because of that, the whole time we're like, oh my god, this won't end. <laughs> Please, Wanda, show up and kill these guys. And that's what happens. <laughs> so I feel if you look at it like that, like it's literally like this is the moment we're we're supposed to start cheering Jason because he's killing the uh, he killed the jock or the uh, or the preppy girl that's a, that's an asshole that we don't like. I think it's like if we look at it from that lens, which is me looking at it from my devil's advocate lens, the same person who likes Malignant, where nobody on earth likes that movie. <laughs> I like Malignant. Uh, that's <laughs> I I. <laughs> You have to have a mindset for Malignant, just like you have to have a mindset for this movie, I feel like, to a point. Well, you have to go think of it a certain way. Yeah. Because I feel like there's a lot of stuff in this movie, honestly, that feels like parody of of uh, of Marvel, in a way. Like I, like, I genuinely feel like the problems in the first act, which are that it feels like a very vanilla Marvel movie at the very beginning, other than Elizabeth Olsen, be, her performance being really good, 
and that you're really drawn into it. It feels just kind of normal and kind of slow at the beginning, and you're like, eh. And then basically the moment that Wanda shows up at the at the temple and like gets stuck in the in the cage and like comes out of the mirror and comes out like uh yeah. like the girl from the ring like that's the moment where you're like oh this isn't a marvel movie anymore <laughs> and then from that moment on really it didn't feel like it the whole movie the color palette changes the whole the ev- the visual style changes everything's different after that and it's like that's the turning point okay yeah i think that's it okay I think that's an interesting perspective on the Illuminati. Because I, I also feel like uh, the other thing it made me think of was the Suicide Squad, where you had the beach scene. Mm-hmm. That was the other thing I just immediately thought of. I was like, maybe if I think about it more like that, instead of like, this is a linchpin moment of the movie. It's like, well, it is kind of, but not in the, well, not in the like, thing where they're important, but more of like. We, I think we come in here expecting it to be that, like to expecting it to be a linchpin moment. And then, like, Krasinski's there and he's giving it his all. He really feels like he belongs here. Like, he does a, like, he's, does the, gives the old college try to dump in the exposition. And I think he's good at it. Like, I buy, like, I buy him as this character. But it doesn't matter. Like, literally none of this matters. And that's the whole point. Like, I love the fact that these guys are so inconsequential in what's happening, which this movie is the battle between Wanda and Doctor Strange. Honestly, it's Wanda versus everybody, because nobody stands a snowball's chance in hell against her in this movie. <laughs> and Which is one problem that I will discuss later. Um, but I feel like that's really what this is, is it's Doctor Strange trying to figure out a way to stop her, whereas these ding-dongs in the in the Illuminati, they could they don't know what's happening. Like, they say as much. They're like, we can handle her. Well, you're with a problem. And it's like, my, my dude, I don't think that's the, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I think you made a mistake. So, uh, there's, here's another thing I feel a little weird about. Um, and this is sort of related to Illuminati, but it's kind of the overarching theme of are is our Doctor Strange ever going to go too far? Like, is he? Because the argument I could think is posited by the beginning of the film is because he gave the time stone away. There's always going to be that inkling that, like, uh, or like when Tony asked, it was pleading with him, like, "Hey, maybe, maybe we should just like chuck that in the nearest black." I forget what he says, like, "Chuck it in the nearest black hole, like, just get rid of it." Like, you're not strong enough to really hold on to that. And he's, his arrogance kind of gets him in trouble. So I feel like we've had some examples of things that would kind of lead us to believe our guy might might do that. Uh, so how, how did you feel about how did y'all feel about that arc in the in the film? You feel like it was well done, or you feel like they had enough to back back that up? Or I definitely feel like uh, I definitely feel like there's a lot going on here, and I think that that's an interesting point where they like the illuminati universe for example clearly is showing doctor strange went too far in this universe i I think that it's actually the movie is kind of reinforcing that doctor strange made the right decision in the in the main world because look at these other ones that were even worse (laughs) and so like these are other options that he could have possibly done he could have gone and gotten the dark hold before and dealt with thanos that way that would have worked Clearly, the Strange Supreme in What If, like, it shows the power that that Doctor Strange could have if he had the Darkhold. This movie shows the power Wanda has with the Darkhold. I would go as far as to say Wanda here is probably more powerful and more terrifying than Thanos. Maybe not Thanos with with the gauntlet at its full power, but... She's certainly more powerful than regular ass Thanos. But I think that... I think that's kind of what the movie is pointing to, is the fact that Strange tried to made what he thought was truly the right call because he probably saw these other things. He was probably like, "Oh, there's a universe where I had to use the dark hold. Oh, there's another universe where I had to use the dark hold. Those are bad. <laughs> these are I bad guess. things." It's like, let's avoid this. But he didn't know about that when he walked into it. So he didn't, mean- like, like in this movie, he didn't know. He was surprised at he was surprised at just the multiverse, let alone like all of the other options and stuff like that. That's so, like, a fair point too. In like mm-hmm. in, in Infinity War, so he's like, no, there's like fourteen million different 
outcomes, and we only we lose in every single one except for one of them. Like, is it different outcomes from that? Is it actually parallel? Is it multiverses? In this, he's like surprised. Like he he spends time like I didn't know there was a multiverse. Where I'm like, just movie ago, like four months ago in Spider Man, you knew you saw like the multiverse breaking. Like, why are we rehashing a conversation? And then in this, it's like, we go somewhere. I don't I don't think, that, I, I think that would be bold for Marvel to do a movie where they're like, the character they've made you like, like Doctor Strange. I think Doctor Strange is like a second fiddle character. I don't need, I don't remember, a, I barely remember a single <laughs> no, thing. You're, you're, you're right. Usually he's I, like B tier like, at best, and sometimes it probably hovers more around the C. Like, I barely remember a thing from the first cat, the Doctor Strange movie. And if if you didn't have the ability to throw in all these extra characters into this one, I feel like it wouldn't have been as good. But like, I think it was a lot better than I expected it to be. I thought it was cool. I thought there were like excellent visuals. I thought it was really well done. I thought that it was creepy. I don't know what. I feel like they can retcon everything that's been done in this one, and I feel like I don't feel like they're building to anything big in the in in this. Like I have no idea what they're gonna do next. Like I feel like maybe he'll be he'll be in something else, and he's just gonna be like a background character again. I don't think that they've actually built anything off for this. That's my unfortunate feeling. I feel like there is this weird like we've hit this lull where like the Marvel movies felt really cool because they're building up to what ultimately was Endgame. I feel like, are we going to have to go through 20 more movies? Like, like I kept thinking, I kept thinking Shang-Chi was going to like pop in. I was like, he's been around. Like we know him, like he's going to be at the fortress doing something like the 10 rings are going to like nothing popped in. I'm like, technically last time we saw him, he was talking with Wong. With who? He was talking with Wong. Yeah. In which and, movie? In uh, Shang Chi at the end. Yeah, that's what I was like. Oh yeah, yeah. like and so I thought he was gonna like I thought they they were gonna pull him in. I thought he was gonna be fighting Wanda. Like that would have been cool. But they haven't connected any of this. I, that's why I think that like the Phase Four. I think they have just fractured. They've like they're all like being built in their own studio, and it's like kind. It's they're all cool, and I think Sam Raimi did an excellent job with this. So I also feel like. Um... I, f- I will say, agree with you on some the Marvel shade in terms of... So I feel like Endgame was, in cinematic history, nothing has ever been built and then and came and came to a head like this. Like, not even... Star Wars was the closest thing probably ever. And even that wasn't even close to this. And I feel like after that, where do you go from here? Because like that, because now you're at the point where Spider-Man and this movie, as much as I enjoy, the, you know, No Way Home and then Multiverse Madness, I feel like there's this feeling of you can no longer be anything smaller than than uh, Endgame was because you can't because you can't go back, which I think is what hurt Black Widow probably because it's just a movie <laughs> that like exists in this universe, kind of. Also, where... the time in which that came out. Like, yeah. if you were going to do a Black Widow movie, it should have been after Iron Man 2, when she was, like, at the height of her... She, like, came out, and everyone was like, oh, shit, Scarlett Johansson was kind of cool in that movie. And then yeah. pivot that into a solo movie. If you do it now, <laughs> when she's, like, being overshadowed by this entire rest of cast. Oh, yeah. There, it's like, who... And, and and I mean it's like and like I think that's part of the problem is that we, that's the point that we've gotten to because the audience is gonna now I don't think that the audience is gonna understand I understand is probably not the right word they're not going to accept a reset button pressed on the MCU to go back to the way it was at the beginning because that's not how the, that's not how moviegoers work and. I, and maybe that's that's good or bad or indifferent. I'm not sure, but I do think that that's the, that they're not going to be able to accept if Doctor Strange was, if this Doctor Strange was the same level as the last Doctor Strange movie, which was a completely forgettable, solid Marvel film. Yeah. And I think that, um, but I will say one thing. I will say also 
uh, about the Doctor Strange thing. He could have been about him not seeing the multiverses and the dark old Doctor Stranges. My argument for that is that what if he's when he's doing his little spell, which is clearly what he's doing when he's like looking, his face is moving all funny, like in a uh, like in one of those videos where they've got the camera on him, where their face is moving but nothing else is moving or whatever. He uh, maybe he's like Doctor Manhattan, where he's only able to see through his other selves. And that's how he's looking at the other universes. And so in universes like, say, the Darkhold one, he's dead. So he can't see through his own eyes there or something. I don't know. That's devil's advocate. Maybe he doesn't see that timeline because he's dead. <laughs> it seems too convenient. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it is. <laughs> the apologist here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would defend the movie Signs also. I can tell you a reason why that movie is the way it is, but that's probably for another show. Same. Because that movie's perfect? I don't think it's perfect, but I think that it's not as bad, not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. For reasons. I think the movie's perfect. Signs? Oh, yeah. All right, hold up, hold up. Like, we're, like, I can feel tangent coming right are now. Are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about Prometheus, Kenny? Look, I I've never <laughs> talked about. I haven't talked about Mel Gibson at all tonight. So, <laughs> but, Is it, wait, did? Oh yeah, technically, yeah, not on, not on camera. Oh no, before we do that, because I know we still got the face. So let's let's table phase four talk. And okay. apparently, signs. It's apparently, signs. I mean, this pleasant. <laughs> One last one last go around on uh, Doctor Strange, and I had one I wanted to kick off, and then we can then you know, we can wrap this review. I loved in the first Doctor Strange that the way he beats Dormammu was not like a not a fisticuff kind of thing. It was more of like a like uh, yeah, it's a, it, was, it was one of those perfect like we've been trying to give a lesson, uh, teach a lesson to him as he goes through the movie, and it's one of those classic. It found like something finally clicks for him and the representation of that him putting him in a loop where he just literally annoys Dormammu to death. I was going to say, literally going to say word for word, he annoyed him to death. (laughs) So now this end fight was kind of, eh, just like make the, make the villain feel guilty. So that one was, it was okay, but I'll rewind back to the other Dr. Strange fight with the music notes. I thought that was quite interesting. How does it work? I have, I have no idea. No, couldn't couldn't tell you. <laughs> and, no, like with no uh, no earthly idea. I mean, uh, though recently they've explained. Uh, I don't remember which composers it was, but they did. T- uh, Danny Elfman did talk about which ones he picked, or which score, or which which uh, classical music uh, scores are going against each other in that scene. Um, of course, yeah, he yeah, because because he's quite the quite the music nerd as a as as you want to be as a composer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I would like more of that in my Marvel movies, please. Like, if I'm gonna if we're gonna if I'm gonna have to continue to sit through these things, like, and get more more fights like that. I thought that was very and I'm just very ex- um, representative of the magic in this movie uh, already. Which is, I would take that scene over any Harry Potter like. <laughs> <laughs> any, of that, any of that nonsense come at me Harry Potter fans <laughs> yo you can't because you don't have any good scenes to come at me with. <gasps> oh! my, my only scene that I, that I say even comes close which is literally the only good battle scene in Harry Potter period is literally when they're fighting in the Ministry of Magic where it's Dumbledore and Voldemort fighting each other which is basically exactly the same I mean it's not exactly the same thing but it's, it's comparable to what we got in this film which is something that feels unique because everything in Harry Potter feels samey. I like that there's like a difference here in the MCU. Like I can feel the difference between what's what this, what Doctor Strange and those guys are doing and what Wanda's doing. I can feel a difference between these two schools of magic, if you want to say that. Whereas they don't have that in Harry Potter, where because everything's boring in Harry Potter and the same. I used to love Harry Potter and now I don't. Daniel has has a face, so I think that means he has thoughts. I don't. I don't know if I have thoughts. I just am like, I get where like things can feel unimaginative, and it's just like, I think that there is a Harry Potter fell into. I think that there's definitely a a disconnect from the book and the movie, where like you can read something, and people are doing a spell, and you can understand how they have to learn to do the spell and everything like that. 
And then in the visually in the movies, they just like, oh, let's just make like blue or red shoot out of their wands, and they like hit like the it, the movies the like the story of Harry Potter got like flattened into one person's interpretation to it. Yeah. Whereas like I think that. And I think that Mar- the Marvel Cinematic Universe is something that's flattening all these comics, which I'm not that connected to. I've not read those. So, oh, but, but to be a- clear, my my only thing I'm pulling from that is specifically the use of magic, how Doctor Strange uses magic compared to how it uses in Harry Potter. Not, I should, uh, yeah, so I hope I'm not saying like all action scenes in Marvel compared to the action scenes in like, like Harry Potter. Like, that's, that's not what I mean. Just like, I feel like the way that they present magic in the Doctor Strange universe, I'm more more interested in how that has been displayed in these two movies compared to the eight, now 10, 11? There's Harry Potter movies? Nine. There's eight Is, movies. There are well, eight no, movies. because there's the Fantastic eight, Beast. Eight of now. the Prime movies, and then. I forget that there are like, three I forget that there's the, three. The, there's the, 11. Bogus, the bogus fake movies. The double more. I guess there's 11, because there were eight in the original. There's been three of the new ones, including Eight, eleven. The, the secret of Dumbledore, which is, the, which is that he's gay. That's real. That's really what the secret is, guys. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. <coughs> but I think I uh, yeah I, I don't like I'm not bad like I used to love the series of Harry Potter a lot, but I think that uh, I think that that was the same mindset that I have as a writer, which is that I feel like the actual world really was secondary to the story that was being told about Harry himself. And like, I feel like that was where she focused more was on these characters more so than the, uh, than the hows and the what ifs of the world, because there's no, there's no big intricate, uh, like chapters that I can recall. This has been a long time since I've read them where, where she talks in depth about how any of these, how any of these things work. They just do work. And there's no there's no reason why, which is why like I don't know that's a, that's a tangent. Yeah, I don't want we don't need to <laughs> we don't need to get into it. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I do think I feel like visually, which could be Sam Raimi. I feel like that's that there's a visual flair to the scene with the with the music fight. Um, I think it's one of the most incredible sequences in the Marvel universe. I think it's uh, I think it's wonderful. Just like the and the the jump through the multi the multiverse uh, earlier in the film where he was grabbing America after they got pushed through the the portal and they go into like the beehive and then like the uh, the ter- the Matrix world and then like uh, to actual uh, Mustafar which is now canon in the MCU. Uh, I'm not even joking. That's that's where one of the places is. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> dead serious. I think I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. Dead serious. Not, not it may not have been Mustafar at the beginning, but I th- at the least at the end, where America is trying to punch Black or Black Widow, uh, Scarlet Witch into the lava planet. That's Mustafar. What is Mustafar? That's Darth Vader's uh, base in in Star Wars. That's where he got. That's where he got all crispy. What? That's where, are, he, that's where Obi Wan had the high ground. I got really mad about this movie all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already. There's already like a. I don't think always, that. Was, so that's not Sam Raimi's call. I will say that. There's always just like that's this special baseline, effects guys. That's the special effect guys call. There's, there's always this little baseline yeah, of anger, that would be... anger that I'm suppressing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think they oh. snuck that in, but I feel like those two sequences sequences are absolutely incredible, and I. I I just love that. I think that's great. And I think that's where you get with the uh it's like a a visual flair that that Sam Raimi has that a lot of the other Marvel directors don't have because they always end up being kind of samey. Uh cool. So, uh you don't need us to tell you to go watch Doctor Strange. You probably have already watched it or you're just going to go watch a Marvel film. So, this isn't necessarily even yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed our thoughts on the film. And um, coming up soon, we'll be talking about Marvel Phase 4. And uh, you kind of heard a little bit of a tease of what we think about it so far already. But our next conversation is definitely going to be, how's it going? (laughs) Because I think this group has thoughts. 
and uh, hopefully when also when the article comes out we'll get the rest of the writers on the team on nerd union because they all they also have some thoughts on it so this is going to be kind of a really cool collaborative kind of get everyone's a lot of people's impressions on the site um where marvel is right now but uh yeah uh i've been commandership this is got the right there we go that's ollie we got daniel on my other side yeah and we'll see you all next time Bye. Two. i'm waving imagine i'm waving <laughs>